How do you know if somebody's being honest? That's a valid question, right? And you might expect an actual answer, but that's some BS right there. You actually think I have an answer for how to read if people are honest or not? I mean, if it were that simple, then you'd always know. You can develop a sense, and you can often tell if people are full of crap, but that sense may fail you at the most inconvenient times, and I guarantee that if you make assumptions about people's honesty, it'll get you in trouble, whether you believe they're dishonest or honest. It's a very simple thing. I mentioned actually in a previous video, I was like, you know, there's the pastors, the priests, the professors, the politicians, uh, the preachers. A lot of people want your attention and they want to be able to get some funds out of you from one, from one, you know, source or another for one reason or another. And it's hard to know if what people promise you or tell you is actually the truth, whether they're feeding you a bunch of bullshit just to try to get your money or whether they are legitimately trying to help you. And there is no way to actually tell the difference. So we have to break it down to what it is. And that's why I mentioned, say, preachers, professors. Preachers want to be your middleman between you and God. And they want you to put money on the collection plate. Professors want you to pay a bunch of exorbitant rates for college uh, because they believe the way that they teach is uh, better than the way that somebody else teaches, right? That they have something else to offer. The politicians, they spend half their time just trying to get reelected the next time. It's pretty sad. We live in a strange state. But <clears throat> there's also the scientists, you know, kind of the backbone of our discovery part of society, the ones who are supposed to be leading, you know, uh, in breakthroughs that help society, but instead they, you know, make them just a ridiculous financial profit off of everything that they invent. But not just that, science has become the science and anything that's scientifically claimed, even though medical journals will publish many things that are turn out to be false, and a lot of things turn out to be false, um, it's nearly impossible to know for sure whether or not something is valid unless it's been repeated with double-blind studies more than once or twice or three times. And um, therefore, we're living in a strange time where, you know, people can take a medication that hasn't even been tested, take it long term, um, suffer consequences, have reactions, have the drug recalled and a lawsuit filed, and it just litigated and forgot about because it was an accident even though there were insider information that said no they knew what was going on why am i going into that because corporate fraud and corporate lies anytime a ceo makes some claim on a podcast or a talk show i have no interest in what they really have to say i mean if it's something about you know life in general maybe i'd be curious about what they say like the guy who does ai or you know software, things like that. People who actually have something interesting, but you find that most people who just want your attention don't have anything to fucking say. And this is, I guess <laughs> it just came to me. I, I've never thought of it that way, but it's, it's true. I've always said, you know, I've heard that term, you know, the, those who speak the loudest often have the least to say, but I've never realized, I guess those who want your attention often have the least to really offer you, you know, Let's think about it, you know, if it comes down to what we believe we've benefited from. Like I said, with the pastor, I know people would disagree with the biblical, you know, those who are religious may say, no, church has helped me. I'd be like, true, but you could read that yourself if you wanted to. And you could get together with other people. You don't have to give money to a church. But if people want to and that benefits them, then there's actually no harm, no foul, because they believe that they benefited and the church has benefited. But it's different if you're giving money to a corporation, let's say, because you think you're helping some corporation that donates to some cause, but really they make all their shit in a sweatshop in China. And, you know, uh, the CEOs will completely bullshit you into thinking, you know, that they're doing the right thing. Just like politicians, and especially right now, they'll just play both sides and you know, oh, I'm the best guy for the job, and uh, vote for this old man. You know, it's the same old bullshit every time. Um, 
but it's sad even the as i mentioned intellectuals and this came up in a text group chat um my brother and i were chatting and i was he was talking about intellectualism and i was saying i just i hate that label and i wouldn't want to call myself an intellectual and he was saying well you you, you are you know and i was like no i'm not um and explaining why i don't like that term because it, it ins insinuates to me kind of a pious like arrogant attitude about knowledge i know that i know very little i may have called myself an intellectual when i was younger now i realize i'm i'm a philosopher and that's it because i know the greatest wisdom lies in knowing you know nothing as socrates would say and it's true i don't know anything I know what I know, but it's enough to realize I don't need to know everything. I don't need to have the answers to the big questions. I just need to answer, can I sleep at night? Do I feel good in my day-to-day -day activities? Can I function at work, at home? Do I live a life that, you know, <laughs> where I'm not self-destructing all the time? Because that's about the most that I can really ask for. And because of that, there's, I'm always looking for advice and direction, just like all of you on how to live my life. I don't, I'm not saying I, I don't direct my own life, but advice helps to hear what other people have been through, right? Well, that's comes to the, you know, main part of the discussion here. <clears throat> As I mentioned, we can't, you know, trust CEOs and politicians and pastors and priests and professors to you know, tell us how to live our lives. But how do we figure it out? Who do we listen to? I'm not going to tell you, listen to Manly P. Hall or Alan Watts or, you know, uh, any of the modern philosophers. I would say study them all. Listen to everything you can. Go to some of the Great Courses series, which, no, I, they don't sponsor me. I just got a huge file of their shit from, like, a torrent file I downloaded like 10 years ago and uh, it had everything in there and I been, I listened to him for like a year straight about all the different philosophers and leaders and then uh, I listened to all the Manly P. Hall recordings then I listened to all the Alan Watts recordings and then I realized okay nobody really knows anything and that was the conclusion that I came to uh, the realization that I had was we're all on our own. All we can do is listen to each other's stories. And I think that's the closest you're going to come to truth. When you're younger, that doesn't help. Because you do believe there's some grand answer. I did hear in some hermetic philosophy that, you know, it's about mathematics. In the end, it's about understanding mathematics. It, I, I can't buy that because mathematics isn't it's, even though it's a language in its own, it's not the language that communicates with p other people. My belief is this. Any truth we find in this world, whoever it may be from, and whoever we look up to, that truth should be something we can use in our day-to-day -day life. If somebody's telling you about some afterlife truth, it's not, in my opinion, really worth even pondering. It doesn't matter. I mean... Unless it's something that has to do with, like, maybe how to get there or, you know, that kind of thing. But not, like, obsessing over not just the future, but also history, you know, how the ancients lived, these kinds of things. We need to take all the ancient wisdom, philosophies, religions, apply them to the modern day, research them, do some theological discussions and research, figure out which parts of which religions made sense, then do as much as we can to incorporate that into our lives, at least the parts that are positive. Not the religions themselves, but the ideas, the simple concepts. Treat others as you would like to be treated, you know? Respect your family and your mother and your father. Respect, you know, those around you. <laughs> Even manners, say please and thank you. You know, just some obvious things that come from rigid living, you know, with a structure, if you will. Manners which in the modern day we seem to take for granted. Especially a lot of younger folk really think that, you know, abandoning just basic manners is something that, you know, is like progress in some way. It's kind of like,
the way that when I was younger, people protested by, say, stopping a forest by climbing it, being cut down by climbing into trees because it was a local thing that was really happening. They climbed into the trees. People hated it. Um, uh, and it made a stink. And yeah, people, you know, it slowed down the cutting of the trees, but it was an old growth forest, right? It seemed, we don't know. We didn't know if it was the right thing to do or not. But nowadays, you know, we've got this, for example, the kids just don't even know how to protest anymore. <laughs> like the Just Stop Oil protesters. My brother said the, yesterday, he's like, okay, I finally take your side on this issue because I had said it's ridiculous for them to stop traffic and throw painting, you know, soup on paintings to make some point. And he's like, well, it gets things talked about. And now he's like, no, because they threw a bunch of paint on Stonehenge. Yesterday, they... They took a bunch of what they consider to be like, you know, natural organic paint that will wash off, whatever. They threw orange paint all over Stonehenge on the day before the solstice where everybody was going to show up. And I thought, so these aren't people who care about nature. These aren't people who care about the environment. These are people who have misplaced anger and misdirected hostility that haven't learned how to manage these emotions properly. And therefore, they aren't taking it out on people who might actually, you know, do them harm. Uh, they're doing it to people in general, just average citizens that they don't really have to face. And even when they do face them, they don't care because, you know, they believe they're righteous. And I bring that up because it's sad. Everybody wants to be noticed. Everybody wants to make a difference. But it's one thing to, you know, you know, to block a forest from being cut down. It's quite another to block, you know, uh, traffic just in general because you want to make a point and a big stink about things. How getting people on your side requires telling them something that not just that they want to hear, because that's part of it, but telling people a way that they can actually fucking do something. And... <clears throat> This is why we look to politicians. They tell us how to do something. This is why we look to preachers and pastors. They tell us how we should do something. This is why we look to professors. They tell us how to do something. CEOs, they tell us what we should be doing with our business or with our time. Scientists, you know, what we should be doing with our tax dollars and spending money on. And that's why all of these different things are important that we understand as much as possible ourselves. And um, learn to manage our emotions to the point where when we discuss these things, we're not going to fall out of line and turn into idiots. Because <laughs> we're all kind of zombies out there. You know, we're all doing our best. It seems like um, our brains never work at just the right time when we really need them. You know, in a good conversation with somebody and you're just not in the mood, things don't work out. But then once in a while, things click. And you have a long, important discussion with somebody and you realize that most people are good. Most people are kind. Most people are inquisitive and curious and are willing to change their perspective. They just need a little nudge. But you have to ask if your your opinion is worth nudging them towards because you might be wrong. And that's the beauty of it. We exchange ideas without the intention to change other people. This is flat out the point here. It doesn't matter who you're listening to who's an expert. If they're just giving you ideas, that's great. But you have to assimilate that yourself. And if you just take what other people believe verbatim without doing your own research, you've already doomed yourself to ever understanding something. Because once people fall into believing something, it's a cult-like attitude quite often, and they will defend it to the end. And unfortunately, a side effect of this is the more resistance something has and the more people say, oh, that's bullshit, that's bullshit. Often, the more the people who believe it will say, oh, those people are just haters and they're jealous. Or, oh, those people just uh, wish they had what we have. Or in religion, they'll just say, oh, those people are just possessed by some demon or Satan. You know, you can't win debating with certain topics with certain people. And it's not worth making the effort to win. You're looking to plant seeds and talk about the topic. I don't know how else to talk about it because conversation is a weird thing to talk about because I'm having a conversation with myself to my camera talking about conversation. 
personal responsibility within a conversation, being able to actually articulate yourself, learning the words, but also learning how to debate properly without being a complete asshole. And that means you have to have something worth saying. So I hope I did. And if I didn't, then I'm sorry. And I'll talk to you all next time. Um, it looks like it's been about 15 minutes here. I think I'm about done. I'm going to go outside and enjoy the sunshine. Peace out. Much love. Late